Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Roundtable Show. This is episode 449. We record this every Friday around 8.30 Pacific Standard Time, and you can watch it live on Facebook if you want to see us visually and hear us audibly. And we've got a great special guest. We've got Michelle Butcher-Jones, um, and we've got some great stories. I'm going to let the panel introduce themselves first of all our guest michelle michelle would you quickly like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers hey everyone i am michelle butcher jones i hail from carbondale illinois which is one of the more southernest most um towns in illinois i'm like five hours away from chicago i have worked in wordpress since 2010 i'm currently the lead support specialist at thrive agency and then i also run a um, tech for non-techie people blog called can't speak geek oh great thank I you i just love that title yeah that's great, great i was totally Surprised that it wasn't taken when I bought it because the purchase of it was on a fluke. Um, my best friend and my husband were always talking geek and I'm like, I don't understand this. And then once I started getting in WordPress, I'm like, there should be a need for this. And it, the domain was there. Right. I got my friend, John Locke. John, would you like to introduce yourself? John Locke, currently doing SEO for manufacturing and industrial firms all across the land. We're wearing our Matt Report hats, aren't we? We're up in Matt Madeira's reporting one out for the homie. He's not here, but we're we're up in the hats. <laughs> yeah, I've got the hats. And um, I've got my friend Adrian. We've already made him laugh, so that's good. Adrian, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name's Adrian. I'm the CEO and founder of Groundhog. We help small businesses simplify, consolidate, and automate all of their sales and marketing within WordPress. Yeah, and for and the then, entire episode, he will be determined to prove that he is not a nice boy. There you go. Uh, look out there. Uh, um, Sally, Sally, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Certainly. I am Sally Getch. My business is WP Fangirl because I am. I am the organizer of the East Bay WordPress meetup in Oakland, California. And I am get off my lawn years old. Oh, right, there you go. <laughs> there we are. There you go. There we are. So on to the first story. WP Agency Summit kicks off on December the 6th. What did you think of this one, Michelle? I am kind of excited for it. I've already actually signed up for it. Um, one thing, though, that I did notice was um, the lineup of it, and it's got some great names um, coming up, except for it was kind of a low number of women speakers, which I promptly got on Twitter and messaged Jan saying, hey, next year, uh, you know, uh, reach out to the masses and we can get even more people involved with yours. Oh, that's nice. Well, uh, right. John, what did you think of it? Yeah, I know some of the people here. So, yeah, you know, Lee Jackson. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to diss it. It looks good. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I always wonder, like, how these things get together. Do they just uh, basically, like, message everybody uh, that they want to have come in and well, they never, they never messaged, did they message you? They never messaged me. No, I'm still working my it's, way it's, up to that. It sounds like, you know, dude reached out to his homies um, and then got, uh, you know, nudged a little bit about, um, yeah, there's a lot of testosterone on that uh, on that speaker panel and uh, it managed to, uh, you know. Well, if Lee if Lee's on it, I'll, I'll be surprised if anybody else gets the bad whip too. <laughs> 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 no, I think I, th I, you know, I, I think it should be great. We've got, we've got some good people, but uh, yeah, so, so far nobody's a, you know, like specifically reached out to me to participate in, in something, but um, uh, I, I, I noticed, you know, speaking of mantles that there's a, uh, uh, an event that WP engine is, is hosting uh, in February, 2020 called, you know, decode or something like that. And they've got like, you know, four or five star speakers lined up all men. Uh, but there is a call for speakers open, so I have been uh, putting it out there. Uh, yeah. Actually, Sally, this morning, Carrie Dills was announced. Good, because it's like not that hard to find women who are developers. So I'm I'm glad uh, we we got some got something coming in there. It's just a, for WP I, Engine one. I have heard through the grapevine there has been a number of females that have been asked. Um, it's just those five men were the first ones to commit. 
Yes. Well, as I think it will work out, but I, and, and I think, you know, sometimes people just need a little nudging. They, they're not paying attention. Um, it, it isn't, you know, like I will not, you know, I, I refuse to believe a woman could be competent enough to speak at, on my panel. It's just, oh, well, the people I know best are, are men. The people who speak up first are men. The, you know, the people who maybe don't have to check on whether they can get childcare are more likely to be mm. men. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I would love to see, you know what, and, and on that point, I would love to see a man, any man, sometime, if they're asked to win these panels, ask the host, how many women are on this panel? And if, is it like 75% men? Because I only counted like four on this panel. And uh, if there's like too many men, I would love to see a man say, you know what, I know a woman or some women that are very qualified. I would like to give up my spot. And I think that you should like ask a woman, but it'll never happen. I actually have seen that happen. Oh, um, nice. David, David Bissett is very good at um, pushing more of the lines when it comes to diversity and has always been more willing to step back. For... Well, these days he can just recommend that his daughter speak in instead. That's She's great. awesome. She is amazing. Here we go. What do you reckon, Adrian? Well, you give, <laughs> if you were invited to a top conference, <laughs> would you give up your spot for a lady? I have to admit, I probably would not. No. Um, I do have a business and, you know, every, every opportunity to speak certainly helps that. But regardless of the diversity on the panel and everything, I've actually personally met several uh, or at least the majority of a lot of the speakers that are on the page and all of them are extremely knowledgeable and personally helped me in my business and, and helped my, uh, me grow my bottom line. Uh, and I can personally vouch for a lot of the people. I actually spent a significant portion of uh, my business's revenue this year on going to places where I can go yeah. to learn about, you know, things that I don't know because, you know, we, as digital marketers, as agencies, we all like to think, you know, we are the, the kind of ultimate authority for our clients on knowledge. But, and the thing that we have to remind ourselves is we don't know everything and we always have to be constantly seeking out other people who may be more successful, maybe have more clients or have been through different struggles than we have and go and learn those lessons so that we don't have to find out and figure out the hard way through trial and error. So if you have yet to go out and invest time and money into learning new things, learning new strategies and, and hearing other people's experiences in the same space as you, I'd highly recommend that you check out. You can register for free. You can go and you can start at least, you know, it's not too late in the year to go start learning new things. And it's really never too late to go and learn new things. No. I think that's a great point, Adrian. On to the next story. New, new report looks at the rise of virtual influence on Instagram. And this came from Sally. A couple of these stories are coming from Sally. What did you, what caught your eye about this story, Sally? Well, I think this is, um, especially, I mean, it's a pity Spencer isn't here for the, you know, robots will or won't take your job uh, discussion. Um, I had, had dropped something else in the uh, Slack showing that, you know, actually countries with, you know, high numbers of, of robots in manufacturing still have, you know, good employment and, and so on and, and so forth. It's not you know, necessarily, does not necessarily spell doom. Uh, but, uh, you know, what this is saying is basically virtual influencers, these totally made up uh, <laughs> characters uh, have been more successful at getting engagement and so on and so forth than um, real humans. So it's like, uh, you know, note to teenagers who want to like grow up to be Instagram influencers, just don't. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit. It, yeah, it's a bit puzzling. I, what do you reckon about this one, John? I was a bit puzzled when I was that a virtual influencer can be yeah. more than a real one. Yeah, it kind of. Oh, you know, and I don't know if you're like around for this part of the the web, but it reminds me a lot of uh, you know, the palace uh, or um, the second life, things like that. But this, I mean, it totally makes sense. I mean, because I mean. Instagram, especially all social media, but especially Instagram, it's where you're curating the very best moments of your life and you're showing the world exactly like the best image of you. So why not uh, virtual influencers? I mean, honestly, the, anything on social media, it's we want to project the aspirational uh, best image of ourselves uh, in order to, you know, have people, you know, 
um, connect with us or, or feel except Twitter yeah. where people go to like be their most vile <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, vicious selves in political yeah, discussions. Twitter and your personal Facebooks. Yeah, yeah I don't do. But Facebook. I mean, think about it. Snapchat filters. I mean, that's the same thing, right? You know, you're making yourself into a virtual character. No different from comic, like comic book characters or movie characters or pro wrestling uh, people. Yeah. It's you're making a character. Yeah, I think, I think linking it with pro wrestling, yeah, it is kind of um, inflated kind of. I see where you're going with, with that. Um, what do you reckon, Adrian? Uh, well, I was recently watching... Thank you. I was recently watching The Crown. Has anybody ever seen The Crown? Yes. Uh, it's the, the, the kind of like mockumentary of Queen Elizabeth and, and Old England and the monarchy and all of that stuff. And you know, one, of the, one of the purposes of the monarchy is to like maintain this permanent status as like this unfazed, untouched, like emotionless character. And it's kind of like the same thing because everybody looks up or is supposed to look up to the monarchy as kind of like the idealistic portrayal of, of what someone should aspire to be. And it's kind of like almost the same thing where like we have, we're designing like these flawless characters and uh it's i just find it like there's a lot of parallels in between that and well if you ever go watch the crown same thing if you go out to like the far east uh they have like uh actual influencers like not virtual influencers but they have like the permanent filter that like totally changes their appearance and image uh there was there was like a story like going around where someone in the middle of like a live broadcast on twitch uh, their filter like stopped working and they lost literally like tens of thousands of followers in like minutes. So it's kind of interesting. Like people are more interested, it seems in, in, in sort of the, the not real versus the actual depictions of what people are like. I don't, I don't really know what to make of it, but it's just an interesting mm. parallel. What do you reckon, Michelle? Um, for me, I have mixed emotions with that. I mean, it's great for promoting products. However, I kind of believe more in best way to put it, the gospel according to the um, musician Pink, where you live your truth on it. Um, only um, promote and be an influencer on products you actually use and believe in and share more of your truth and stories instead of being like, oh, this is the first time I'm seeing this, but I'm promoting it. Yay, here, everyone, bye. Because then all you have is your word and your name and if it's a product that actually stinks and you don't like it it could come back to look at you that you're not actually showing your followers a good product or putting your name on things that are of quality true true yeah yeah good point all right on to the next story I, I suppose you don't have to worry about the like real life reputation of, of your virtual influencer um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good point, isn't it? Actually, that's excellent. You, 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 it's not like Prince Andrew or something, is it? Right. Nobody is uh, uh, nobody is uh, necessarily expecting them to have any, um, you know, sincerity or real life anything. Uh, I'll be like Prince Andrew. Mm. It's it's <laughs> it's uh, on a side note before we're gonna. It's amazing how somebody can have nothing to do in life except lays about and. Uh, you know, just basically be rich and, and pampered and they still screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite amazing, isn't it, really? It is. It's true. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, got a bit of a cough. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Need to get some more tea, I reckon. Right, on to the next story. Genesis Shapers, November 2019 recap. And it came from you as well, Sally. You've been very productive. Thank you for your help. But what, yes, what, what, well, this was, I, I saw this very shortly after uh, another post, which I think I linked to in the, in the Slack earlier, about a, uh, basically a proposal to do away with themes uh, in the future, that once Gutenberg is sort of like sufficiently finished to be a full you know, website builder that... Um, that we need to rethink the notion of having themes. And, uh, you know, I was reading over uh, this posting a few days later because I work with Genesis, so I, you know, keep up on, on uh, what's going on there. And uh, it seemed that, well, this, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, this subject also uh, came up. They were talking about working with Gutenberg and the new... There are various things that Genesis has done to to implement working with 
Gutenberg and to onboard people by a, including, you know, sort of of sample content made out of, of blocks and styling for blocks. But then if you're a theme developer, there's, you know, there's, there's the challenge, first of all, of still needing to support both the classic editor and the, um, and the block editor. But so uh, the question comes up, you know, would reducing Studio Press child themes to a single theme that provided customizable options and configs to change the look and feel be positive for Genesis developers and the community? How would premium Genesis child theme authors create themes in this kind of world? And that's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a thing to wrap your head around. Um, and uh, so people basically said, well, you know, it might work, it, it, it might not work. Uh, you know, we don't know, we don't think Gutenberg is there yet in terms of like being able to do that in a practical way. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a quote from Carrie Dill saying, you know, the idea of moving to a single theme with, with skins is an opportunity for Genesis to standardize a way of doing things that would not only be beneficial to the Genesis community, but could possibly set a standard for the larger WP community. Maybe I'm dreaming. Um, but it's, it's an interesting thing. It's one of those things where you might or might not choose to do it, but it's worth talking about mm -hmm. uh, and, and considering, you know, what it might change and, and where things might go. Um, mm. What do you reckon, Michelle? I actually have already started seeing a little bit of it with a change with Studio Press, especially with a new site I'm building on the Hello theme. Um, I've actually built a site before on it, and then when I re-download it this time, it's more Gutenberg friendly instead of with the widgets. And it took me a second for learning curve on it because I'm like, everything has moved on me. It's kind of like when you go to the grocery store and they've completely revamped it. Every time I'm in Trader Joe's, yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, everything is in a progressive move. I do hope that with the evolving of Gutenberg, that it is able to bring a lot of the third parties with it. Um, because for one, I just love Studio Press and how it's been built has been great and their support teams are phenomenal. But I do fear that in a way, the more we go towards Gutenberg and things being built in, like you had said, Sally, of there could be a chance that maybe not for another five or 10 years though, but there is more of this um, one theme and then just page builder it out. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon, John? <coughs> yeah, I think I'm I, like Michelle just said, I think that themes eventually will go away. I don't think Gutenberg's in a, in a spot to, to replace that now. I think a lot of the existing page builders do a lot better job in the present day, might get there eventually. But I think that's part of the reason why Studio Press sold to WP Engine is because the apex of theme sales had already occurred. And, mm. and the writing's on the wall with <clears throat> Gutenberg, that that's the way that the WordPress project is going. Um, I'm curious, hey, Sally, how come, why did they not ask you to be on the Genesis Shapers? Uh, I guess I'm not widely influential enough. Um, I, I mean, it's, enough. it's 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 not like I I said, yo guys, why didn't you invite me? And yeah. and you know they 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 might if I they might if I pushed for it, but um, I, I'm already kind of overwhelmed, so I I figured yeah. I can I, I I can wait to pursue that particular honor. Yeah, it's just all the affiliate the affiliate sales or or whatever. Uh, well, it, it could be. I I don't do yeah. affiliate sales for anything, so. Mm -hmm. Power. Power. There we go. What, what do you reckon, AJ? I don't really have much more to add on the subject. I mean, the, the only thing that I can mention is that I do a lot of support uh, where I have to like log in and, and, and check out what people are doing. Yeah. Uh, and for the hundreds of people that I've done that huh. over my tenure as a digital marketer and kind of like WordPress implementer person, I have never seen someone actually using a child theme. So <laughs> it's always, it's always wow. you know, they get the main theme. They got the page builder and that's like, you know, and that's just how they do it. And that, and I don't, I don't see like child. I don't know how people still make money on child themes. Cause I just, I don't, I don't see people using them ever 
Like, you know, well, you could disable the theme or enable the default themes. Like, oh, they're using Astra or, oh, they're using Ocean WP or, oh, they're using Hello theme. It's like, that's usually what it comes down to. So, I mean, that, that's just from like anecdotal experience. That's what I've seen. I mean, I might just be operating in the wrong crowds, but I... Well, I don't think you're operating. I think I, I think I found that really interesting, what you've just said, because it, it shows to me the the difference between different groups because I, I, to some extent i think um studio press and the genesis crowd really they appealed to the kind of quasar de wordpress developer type. absolutely but you know the, uh, the, the, the a lot of the, the target market is like the diyers do yes. it yourself first getting into the market yeah you know they're spinning up their business they don't you know they're bootstrapping it Right, they don't got time to mess around with like child themes and stuff. They're like, all right, I need the quickest and most efficient solution. And generally, that's like slap Astro in there, get Elementor free, and then you're on your way. Well, but you, there was some, um, there was some live. Obviously, something was going on because a number, not a large number, but um, well known in the WordPress community, decided to sell. I think almost a year ago, you know, Studio Press and there was some other people that decided to sell their theme-based businesses um, and get out of the market. So I think probably sales were declining. Um, what I think is probably going to... I think if, you, if you're if you selling just very generalistic themes for a very broad audience, I think you, you're probably going to be in some trouble. I can't really see themes going away for somebody, for des the designer type. They could probably use something like Hello and a page builder because they've got the design skills to knock up something pretty rapidly. But your average Joe probably hasn't got the design ability. But a lot of people think they are really good at designs. <laughs> so well, yes, the... I mean, you, you are going to get some people who want to do it themselves. And, you know, what you get is GeoCities. And uh, if they're happy with that, then I, I guess that's okay for them. Um, and you have the people on the other end of it where they don't want to touch it. They don't want to waste time on it. They're busy running their business. Make them something that, you know, fits their brand style and, and that whoever has to, like, put the content in can do it easily. Uh, you know, there's a there's a wide range of different kinds of people using WordPress and and doing different uh, things with it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a, a little curious uh, uh, how uh, <clears throat> uh, you know wh whether you've actually checked uh, that something is or isn't a child theme. Um, uh, Adrian, I, you know, I don't know if you, you necessarily go in there because you've got an active theme. Well, and... we have to look at the system debug log and then go enable mm. like the main theme or like the default, you know, 2012 theme or whatever, check if it's a theme incompatibility. So, All right. Yeah. It's, it's fairly standard. Like we have, we have like our step procedural debug and that generally includes checking out what theme they're on, if there are any known compatibilities and whatnot. But two things with that though is you, the decline of themes won't happen too fast because there's just a lot of people who don't want to build their own site and they will pay someone for it. And that person they pay will still be using the themes. Um, and it's definitely both sides of the fence between if you want to use a child theme or not, and that will always stay until themes go away. But also one thing that Gutenberg will help in the style of themes is we can continue taking out a lot of the functionalities that people put in themes to bloat them, like how many there are that has like Rev Slider and Soliloquy and all of those plugins built into this theme. We'll be lucky to see all of those go away. So when, and it will help for bloat of the site and will also help for security of the site. It's like back in 2017 when there was a huge rev slider um, mm -hmm. vulnerability. There was a rev slider is installed on like 80% of WordPress sites <laughs> bundled was, into everything. There was, was, yeah, it's bundled into basically everything you get from Theme Forest. Um, there was over 300,000 sites hacked because many of the clients 
customers did not even know they had a rev slider on the site because of it being baked into the plugin. I mean, well, like, the thing, plus they couldn't even, you know, upgrade it themselves if they wanted to because they didn't have a separate license for it. No, it was a nightmare. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I have not used Breezy. Um, the sponsor that that uh, we have not had mentioned. At, at, I was just about to mention it. Thank you very much. Uh, um, for... But my understanding of it is that it does work, uh, you know, somewhat more like a whole site designer than like a, you know, kind of typical theme and that this was one of the things that had intrigued people about it. Yes. So thank you for that mention, Sally. It's much so um, breezy um i was just about to mention before the break but i thought i'd mention it now before we go to the break um breezy you know is the sponsor of the show thank you so much for your support breezy i think it's one of the more innovative page builders on the market we interviewed one of the founders a couple of months ago me and adrian um that their experienced wordpress developer team and they decided to develop breezy uh, like i say if you're looking for a really innovative page builder that's got some really different elements to it than some of the major competition, I suggest that you go over to breezy.co and have a look what they've got to offer. But maybe buy one, you know, Black Friday's coming. Uh, um, so maybe it's a good time. I, I, they didn't tell me if they were going to do a special deal, but I'd imagine they are. And um, maybe it's a good time, but if you do, please tell them that you heard about them on the WP Tonic show. So we're going to go for a break, folks. We'll be back in a few moments. We're coming back. And I've got some exciting news, listeners and viewers, in the new year, probably. We're going to have new intros and endings for the show and a new advert for the show. So... If you've been a bit bored, you're going to be more entertained. What more can you ask for? Are you not entertained, listeners and viewers? So I'm um, always entertained. I was entertained last week. I kind of, oh God, am I? Uh, um, let's go for number four. Breaking private equity company requires, oh, uh, breaking private equity company requires .org registry. I think this came from you again, did it? It's Sally, did it? Uh, yes. Um, I, I had seen some news about this uh, a little earlier. Um, uh, but apparently, uh, which I had never paid attention to, the top-level domain .org uh, was owned by the Internet Society, um, for whom I did some work uh, at the end of last year, because um, I have some friends who work there. Uh, and... Uh, but they they sold this uh, to a private equity company, wow. um, and so uh, you know this gives the Internet Society a huge as yet unknown endowment, rather than worrying about what the future of the .org domain name holds. Um, and so, you got, you got any ideas how much they sold it for? Uh, they appear not to be saying, but they 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 mention uh, some of the uh, 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 some of the money. Um, that came from the public internet registry uh, in the previous year. So uh, I imagine it was a goodly chunk. Um, Are we talking about tens of millions? Or? Well, it says here, uh, PIR generated $101 million in revenue in 2018 and contributed nearly $50 million to the Internet Society, uh, contributed $74 million to the Internet Society in 2017. So I, I, I think you need to add a few zeros to that estimate. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it's likely a, a, a lot of money, but I am curious as to like, well, where is this going uh, in terms of prices? Because there had been a, a price cap on .org domains and they cost, you know, a standard one a little bit more than a .com domain. And I don't know whether... There was also a cap on if you were like reselling the, the domain to, to someone. Um, you know, uh, I uh, am responsible for some sites with .org domains, and I, I hope that they're not going to like suddenly have to pay 50 bucks a year for their domain. Um, and, well, uh, I'll look, I think, I think it probably is. You're but it could, a... you know, it could, it could happen. And uh, so I think this is a, well, they're not going to be able to, uh, you know, why do you think a private equity company bought it? Because 
Oh, but yes, that... if they're if they're buying it, they obviously expect to make money from it. So they you know, you you can imagine that uh, prices are going to go up in uh, in some well, ways. Well, if they're going to offer different services, you know, bun, you know, try and bundle hosting, you know, extra services on top, there's that possibility. Or they, they're going to expand the market, which I think is going to be a little bit difficult. Um, or they're going to put the price all, all free. What do you reckon, Sally? I don't know. Uh, I, there are a couple of, uh, of, of linked articles here about uh, uh, eh, 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 things here. Uh, one that says, you know, former CEO of ICANN appears to have a connection to the firm that just bought the .org registry. Uh, and another one on the economics of .org domain names with a nice featured image of, of dollar bills coming off the press. Um, <laughs> the second most valuable namespace behind .com. Um, and so to start round down to 10 million domains at 993 per domain, it brings in about a hundred million dollars in revenue at today's wholesale price. Costs are minimal. Um, oh yeah, they're just going to put the price. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, that's the thing is if you've got 10 million domains, you don't even have to raise the price a lot to no, make it just, a tidy profit. That was an easy one. What do you reckon, Adrian? Well, um, I always appreciate the opportunity for someone to spot something where money could be made that is currently not. Uh, whether that's in the best interest of the consumer at this point is questionable, considering that generally dot .orgs are used for, well, organizations and generally nonprofits. However, there is no actual check uh, in terms of actually going and registering for a .org yeah. domain that involves you actually being. A yes, as somehow nobody. I don't organization. think it, Right. I mean, has anybody created like a dot nonprofit TLD? I never checked. I do not know, but I know that I have groundhogwp.org and groundhog.org and various other dot orgs without having to actually be, you know, a, a, an affiliated organization that. What did you buy him? Non you NFP or whatever. You don't mind me asking, what did you buy him? Well, yeah, it's generally just good practice, you know, if you, if you to plan keep on other people from getting them and, and pretty much you just for... sit on them. Right. So it's like dot coms, you know, dot coms are for sale. People go and buy like a whole mm. bunch of dot coms to squat on them in hopes that someone will come to them and say, Hey, listen, I'll give you $4,000 for this domain that you bought for like $18. That's, that's a business strategy. There's actually, we came across a situation when I was working in the digital marketing agency, someone had a business name, they wanted the dot com and the dot com was taken. And basically, oh yeah, people the, will charge a ton of money yeah, for domains. The per, this this person's business model. So who owned the domain? This person's business model was buying domains of other well-known name brands, uh, including like musicians like Michael Jackson. Ah, and, a, a, a real live domain squatter. Yeah, a re, and and his whole business was just extortion for the domain name and millions of dollars because you know the the brands wanted the brand name. Uh, and they're very popular and they wanted that authority and have the dot com. So I, I feel like this move is simply going to enable that a little bit more. Um, but kind of like it's kind of like how dot com is now. And while that might not be a great situation for everybody who's consuming dot orgs, uh, it is a great situation for the people who's collecting the fees for the people that pay for them. So, you know. I, I, I don't really have like an opinion that this is a good or a bad thing, but that's kind of just like, it's basically going to be a lot more commoditized than it is currently. Well, it's a difficult one. You know, I, I really don't see why they had to sell it really in some ways, but what do you reckon, Michelle? I am in a wait and see type of view for mm. them. Um, because I would like to see that they would hold true to the... Isn't it, isn't it a little bit disappointing that they just did this, really? It's, I, I feel sort of mixed about it. I have, I have not got on to any of my friends, although I, I suspect they might say it's a, you know, only the official spokesperson is allowed to comment. Um, it, it could be okay. Uh, it could be not so okay, but obviously, if they sold it, they thought they would make more money by selling it than keeping yeah, it. Yeah, well, obviously, they looked at it. The, yeah, that's what. What? Oh, yeah. Sorry, you lost. You. you you've, right, Michelle. What, what do you reckon? I, I feel it's it's a hope for the best, but 
be realistic about it. Um, I do see more than likely that the prices will go up. I have a feeling that the um, uh, restraints for being uh, uh, getting the ore domain is going to go even more down than what they already are. Because, like, I will say, I had bought an um, dot org that I was actually going to build a nonprofit on, but time mm-hmm. got away from me and I didn't get it, and I just went ahead and let the domain go. Um, but so, so, did you have to give them any kind of evidence that you were a real nonprofit? Then? No, with Namecheap, I did not. No, no. Um, they just let me purchase the domain. I would like to see, in a way, more of are you going to use this for good use with the dot orgs? Like there are dot orgs out there that are very apparently spreading a lot of misinformation about several very, very important topics that have obviously gone through like zero vetting process whatsoever. So it's almost right. Although they're basically you pro- dot coms you probably at this could, point. I mean, the you know, the the process of incorporating as a as a nonprofit, um, you know, th- there are no checks for uh, are you virtuous and truthful? There are basically only checks for have you filled out the right paperwork and is your financial structure appropriate? The 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 I feel like part of the reason that this this deal took place is because because there's none of these checks and balances in place to validate yeah. the validity of such also, an organization. They feel they may as well capitalize on on the TLD since nobody's really following the rules anyway. Yeah. As I feel like maybe kind of like the yeah, at least the sentiment behind the decision to just like, all right, well, you know, let's just make it private equity because everybody's treating it like private equity anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, on to the next story. I did ask, I did ask John about it. What do you, sorry, John, I apologize. Yeah. What so you for those who don't understand what's going on, like there's a international body called ICANN and they oversee all domain names on the, on the earth. And, but what they do is they don't, manage them all directly what they do is they farm out the management of Mm. top level domains to what are called um registry operators and the uh internet society was took over the registry operation of the dot org uh top level domains in january of 2003 so they basically sold so what they would do is uh this uh the the they would kick themselves uh like so much money the operating costs were like 45 million per year i think i read somewhere here that they uh like i said okay so the, the i can't registry, see, I, I, can't yeah. follow, I can't follow why the running costs were 45 million well Maybe you're I'm, you're overseeing all the registration well, okay, so the, the registry operators, their job is to make sure, like, say, if you bought a .org, like WPDonic.org, their job is to set up all the zone, the domain zones, to make sure if somebody sets, uh, types in WPDonic.org that it goes to WPDonic.com or whatever, that it goes to the right place. So they oversee all of that. That I can, like, basically, you know, says, we'll give management to these different do, uh, domain operators. But if you've noticed, you have when you yeah. buy a domain, you have to pay a, uh, uh, a um, an ICANN, ICANN fee. So, ICANN you know, fee. Yeah. ICANN is, is still collecting money from these people. Yeah, they're still collecting money. So, yeah, so if they had $45 million operating costs, uh, according to this, so the registry itself, which is the collection of the .org domain names, is the registry. That generated $101 million in revenue in 2018, and it put $50 million back in the uh, bank for the Internet Society, the the domain operator. And in 2017, they made $74 million, so it went down a little bit. So what they did is they basically sold the registry to a private equity firm. Private equity firms, basically, it's, you know, like, you know, it's capitalism, man. So they're just going to like milk it for everything that they can. So eventually like these prices will raise because they're, they're going to try and make money and, uh, you know, basically squeeze the blood out of everything. Um, but, uh, you know, again, no checks and balances. So stuff like this happens. So. Yep. Yep. All right. On to the next story. <laughs> and don't forget that our friends at automatic own the dot blog domain. That's true. 
That's yeah. true. Right, there we go. On to the next story. BB Press 2.6 released after six years, including per forum moderation and engagement engagements API. What did you think of this one, Michelle? I am so happy to finally see it having a major update after all these years. It has, it has, uh, yeah, not gotten a lot of love lately. It's, uh, I, I'm so glad for JTrip and all the people yeah. who work on it that yeah. it finally got released. When the news drop, I mean, I literally woo when I saw it the first time. <laughs> yeah, he's been on the show. Hopefully, he'll come on back on in the new year. He's been a friend of the show. Um, I know he wanted to do. A lot of stuff that it was just time and money really what do you reckon um john yeah bb press um yeah i have um one legacy client don't really talk to that there's not much anymore but they have a site with bb press on it um you know there's still sites with forums out there there's there's uh, still a lot of old forum sites i mean it's uh not everybody has gone to uh you know, Quora or, uh, you know, whatever else. So, you know, good to see it get an update. I, uh, I haven't really followed it that closely in recent years to be quite honest, but well, it is hell yeah, of a, it's, it's a hell it's of a time. Busy, yeah. Yeah. Right. So you, I mean, it gets, it gets used for the support forums on the wordpress.org site. Uh, and so, you know, uh, that's, uh, certainly something that I'm, I'm sure benefits from having the update and the per forum moderation and, and all of those things. Having a forum on your website is a thing, you know, I know a lot of people who've tried to do that using one tool or another, possibly as a monetization option. And have people have mostly found that doesn't seem to to work. That's not where engagement happens. A lot of people switch to having Slack groups or Facebook, Facebook. groups or, yeah. or something else like that. So, um, you know, I think that may be part of why um, as a project, it hasn't gotten that much uh, attention because that's, it just hasn't really been where the, uh, where the action is. Yeah. I'm kind of more interested in, in this than normal because I kind of, a lot about there's about two to three themes that people look at in the learning management area with learn dash and with lift lms and they bundle bb press as part of the theme and i i always try to stay steer clear first of all i, I didn't yeah that does i mean i understand why you might want to combine bb press with a learning management platform but bundling anything into the yeah. theme, bad idea, as yeah. Michelle just uh, reminded us about Rev Slider. And I, I, I didn't like it. I thought it was a bad, it's a bad idea. And secondly, that BB, I had doubts if it was going to continue um, being, you know, six years is a hell of a long time period, isn't it, Sally? That, that is, yeah, in internet years, that, that is um, an extremely long time. That's older than your oldest cat. The cats are ten, but oh, so um, <laughs> you're not allowed to mention their age. Do they get upset? Do they? Uh, no, because they they are uh, convinced that they are eternal. Eternal, they probably are. It's been, oh, I forgot. Um, what do you reckon, Adrian? I think it's a case of uh, too little, a lot late. Yeah, I commend them for for pushing it out and getting it out there, and you know, sticking with their mission, their purpose, and their values. But I'll, you know, num rule number one of like marketing is like go to where your audience is. It's a lot easier to go to Facebook or to go to Slack or go to wherever your audience already has accounts and they're already participating and are already engaged in a conversation, and simply starting another conversation that relates back to your brand. It's a significantly more difficult to pull people to wherever you are having your discussion, if it's on your site or wherever mm -hmm. it is, for example, I have like my Facebook group and that sparks a ton of engagement because it's just super easy for people to, to get in. They don't have to create an account. They already have yeah. Facebook. I mean, you leave people who aren't Facebook users, you know, out of the conversation, but then you can have a conversation with them on Twitter or wherever else that they're hanging out. So I, I just, it's so much easier to go in and essentially rent space at this point on free platforms that you don't have to really pay for, you don't have to maintain, and you don't really have to do any work, uh, and where people are already hanging out. I and think, I think that's really the future of, of 
like digital it, conversation well, it, is it, on those You know, platforms. it is easier and it does seem to get more engagement. You are at risk because you don't own that platform. You so are. Them, it's always like, you know, the, the taking space, everything out yeah. from under you. And as long as you're aware of that and you have a sort of backup plan for, okay, well, what happens if Facebook goes away or starts charging enormous amounts of money? I, I belong to a, a Slack group for professional communicators and um, they use this particular Slack both for like their company and pay for that. And they had also a bunch of like free members. And apparently at the end of last year, the owner of the agency that runs this got hit with a $12,000 bill from Slack. Um, And (laughs) abruptly she's like, yes, I cried and threw up at the same time. And, uh, you know, had to change like the number of channels and where the guest users were allowed to be and, and, and so on. And, and, you know, all of us who are free guest users, were like, oh, well, if you start a GoFundMe, we'll chip in. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it, you know, it is a trade off. The, the ease of access, the convenience and this and that for uh, a certain level of vulnerability. Yeah, so here, here, the, the yeah. thing is, though, like with BB Press, you know, you're waiting at, at least on like the rented space. While the trade off is absolutely there, you're also getting consistent support updates uh, and the user experience is, is there to support a lot of engagement and, and those things. We've been waiting for like BB Press for like six mm-hmm. years. <laughs> yeah. And in that six I years, mean, a lot has changed in like digital okay. engagement. Right. And it, and I don't know if they can, if they can catch up and I don't know, you know, I don't know what you would have to create I to never, have a really good engagement platform uh, on your own site. I got to admit, I never, re- I recommended a commercial product. I forgot its name. Lee Jackson put me onto it and I, I built out a learning management system and this commercial, they had a fully hosted plan, hosted um, service, or you could um, download um, the application for like $120 and then you could host it yourself and that's the one we integrated because because BB Pre- Press, you know, just wasn't being maintained and I agree. The only thing, I, I agree with you, Adrian, to a certain degree. I think if you're getting started Slack or Facebook, but, you, you know, you've been part of um, some learning management um, discussion groups that you, me and you regularly attend and you've heard other people, you know, Facebook has some limitations, hasn't it, Adrian? Absolutely. So, so the thing is, right, if your audience isn't on Facebook, then you need to create a space for them to actually be able to go. So if, you, if your niche is not like a regularly active Facebook user, then you can and easily actually create a platform for them to come and regularly visit your site. The thing is, if your niche and your audience is a regular somewhere else, it's asking a lot for them to divide yeah. their attention in between spaces, right? So for example, a lot of like, I, I don't really know how to say this like kindly, but you know, the the less reputable forums and stuff all yeah. own their own space and all have their own platform because those people don't hang out on regular social media. They go to like uh, alternative yeah. alternatives. I alternative, think that's, alternative. I think that's the sources. way we should put it, isn't it, Adrian? They go to alternatives. Thank you. That's a I, great well, yeah, way. I to mean, put I it. I have a friend who runs a uh, not safe for work sort of a a, a business, and it, uh, you know the social platforms are not designed for that they, no they they're have, not so creating they, they, space they have terms of service sense. that say nope can't do that so you know if you're doing that you have to you have to go do it somewhere well, actually that you bring out we we've just touched another interesting thing i want to put this to michelle you know we've had this this whole thing about politics on facebook twitter banning people i think the social landscape it's going to get much more restrictive. Do you think that will encourage people to go back and looking at forums again a bit more likely? I think this move is already starting to go there in a way to forums just because just the simple exodus of people I know who has left Twitter and or Facebook in the past two years um, because of just the sheer drama of it and your keyboard warriors, um, plus all the politics stuff. Um, And I feel too that more, you're gonna get more people who want 
specific topics. Now, on the flip side of that, when it comes to using things like Baby Press and Buddy Press, um, in schools, um, the students are not allowed to get on any social media on the... Um, oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah, they block access to, like, everything yeah. in schools. And matter of fact, it makes it fun because with me, I do a lot for my daughter's high school, so I do have internet access there. And um, I'm not, a, I, I can't even get on any of the social media for um, using their internet. But I know of at least one child in the WordPress sphere, where she's not a child anymore, she's an adult, who built a site with BB Press so her and her friends could have a way of social interaction while at school that's not being blocked. Well, I remember there was a story, I that's don't clever. know if we covered it, but I remember reading it about kids using Google Docs to pass mm -hmm. notes to each other because that was like the only thing they were allowed to access from school. No, I don't remember. I don't think we discussed that, but that's an interesting story. Um, One of Topher's daughters who did it, and she even did a whole um, WordCamp talk about it. Well, there we go. There we go. Uh, what's the time? I've, um, I think I'm going to drop story six. Well, does anybody want to discuss story six, or do you rather go on? Do you want to discuss it, John? No, all right. I think we just go on our recommendation panel. If you've got some recommendation, please put it into the chat. It really helps me with it. Get the show notes up quickly. Um, I've got, I've got one, uh, listeners and viewers. I, I've been fixated by a bloody dog that's got a YouTube channel, Key Hush, the stunt dog. It, the link will be in the show notes. He's a husky, and the owner lives in Devon in the UK, and she's very um, good in... Um, speaking the voice of her beloved husky and it's just hilarious this I'm, I'm not sure who's the pet actually the owner or the actual dog so uh, when i need to chill out and um and look at something funny i look at key keys um i would actually call him keith I, I, when i thought I, I, when i first got on the channel i thought it was keith i think it's a much better name come here keith uh, um but no it's key but it's hilarious. I must recommend it. Anybody? Shall, uh, shall we start with Sally? Have you got anything you want to recommend? To I, I, my recommendation this week is totally non-technical. Uh, something I didn't think I would like, and I uh, and I do, is uh, Starbucks peppermint mocha ground coffee. Um, as, uh, I'm not a, that big a mint fan, uh, but it, I find the mint flavor is not too overpowering. It, so it sort of tastes like, you know, more like chocolate than mint. And I'm big on flavored coffees. It's one of my remaining vices. Well, we must have very little vices, mustn't we? Um, Adrian, have you got anything you want to recommend to the listeners and viewers? Um, it's Black Friday. Um, Black, <laughs> Black Friday know. has arrived. Uh, there are deals everywhere. A lot of them start next yeah, Friday. Good. Yeah, grand, grand. You got, you can have one, aren't you? Aren't and you? Uh, ours started today. Yeah. It's twenty five percent off. <laughs> and uh, if you need to simplify, consolidate, and automate your marketing and sales, then we're going to have this dealer running until December 2nd. I like yep. that you can maybe make a wrap out of that. Simplify, automate, consolidate. Simplify, consolidate, and automate. That's, uh, th those are the three things that we help small businesses do. Oh, that should be your headline. That should be your tagline. That line. is the headline. <laughs> oh, is it? The <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh dear, he's going to shoot me there. Uh, oh, that's me finished. He's going to cut my ghoulies off. John, John, uh, oh, Jesus. Um, John, have you got anything you want to recommend to the listeners of you? Yeah, this is like a, a Twitter account. It's all a meal panels, twitter.com, all a meal panels. It's hilarious. Like they basically call out, um, you know, these, you know, panels, especially like they have fun uh, with the ones that are like, you know, women in tech panels, but it's all men on the panel, you know, things like that. But it's their, their writing style is very sarcastic and it's, 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 it's I saw, I saw I one in there. It's like gender diversity in the military forces, and it's all like a bunch of like white haired, grade like male generals. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Michelle, have you got anything you want to recommend to the listeners? I have two things, actually. Ooh, you, get, you get gold stars for two things. Well, one of them isn't technically for me at all. If, oh, it was a star and a half then. Um, if you missed WordCamp US, um, Go and watch on WordPress TV the um, how the WordPress community can embrace the next generation talk. Those 
uh, uh, six girls who range from age uh, 13 to 19 gave, I think, the best talk I've ever seen at any WordCamp US on um, the future, how they're treated in the WordPress community, mental health. Um, they talk about a lot of the different um, things happening for all of us, but especially the um, teenagers and young adults. Okay. And then a um, little promotional plug with me running the website can'tspeakgeek.com. We're always looking for people to fill out the um, WordPress Spotlight interviews so we can share everyone's story in WordPress. Oh, that's interesting. Thanks for that. So, I might as well stay with you, Michelle. We're going to wrap up the show now. So, what's the best way for people to find out more about you and what you're up to, Michelle? Um, definitely can't speak geek.com. You can find me on Twitter at Michelle with one L underscore butcher. And then on Facebook on my page, uh, Michelle butcher Jones. Yeah, you did a great job. You must come back. Um, John, what's the um, best way people can find out what you're up to? Two ways. Uh, you, you can hit me up at my website, lockdown seo.com. But, uh, where what I encourage you to go is my YouTube channel, make daily videos on SEO. Right. And uh, find out it's a channel, just search either Lockdown SEO or John Lock SEO on YouTube. Right to you. And it's uh, hella impressive that anybody can make daily videos on anything. So there's days where it gets a little tiring, but you know, uh, you gotta keep doing it. Once you say you're gonna do it, you gotta do it. And Adrian, what's the best way people can find out I, I, i'm guessing what the best way they can find out more about what you're up to <laughs> the best way you can find out more about what i'm up to is coming on the show every thursday for the interview show at 12 p.m est and then also at 11 30 est on the friday for this panel other than that you can go to groundhog.io two g's at the end find out more about what we have to offer you and sally what's the best way to find out what you're up to you can find me at WPFangirl.com. Uh, you can find the meetup at EastBayWP.com. I am at Sally Getch on Twitter uh, and on Instagram, where you will mostly see pictures of the cats. And listeners and viewers, if you really want to support the show, a great way is to leave an iTunes review and to support the Matt Report. Um, if you leave a review in the next couple of weeks and you take a screenshot and you email it, to me at jonathan at wp-tonic.com with your address uh, i will choose one which i will announce on the show after the new in the next couple of weeks and i will send you a matt report hat that's not that's a great deal isn't it so all you have to do is take a screenshot of the review that you left email it to me and i will choose a winner in the next couple of weeks and send you a nice Matt report hat, which me and John are modeling. Now show them your hat, John. Well, there we go. Yeah, it's, and that part of the funds goes to great calls as well. And um, you'll be sporting the Matt report as well, which is a great other podcast. We're going to wrap it up now, folks. We'll be back next week with another round table WordPress and the web in general. And we'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Bye. Bye.